This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got a whole lot of action across Major League Baseball for tonight with, I believe, 16 total games because there is one doubleheader in the mix there as well. So a lot of options, both for money lines and for strikeout props. What we'll do for today is dig into what my numbers are saying about those markets for today. Outline three money lines and three strikeout props. I like now over at FanDuel Sportsbook and discuss whether to bet them now, whether to bet them later, and how to view the market overall at FanDuel for today. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a digital media managing editor for FanDuel Research. Here to take a look at tonight's MLB slate from a betting perspective and break down my my favorite money lines and strikeout props over at FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll think of all that, starting with the money lines here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it, we are there. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And as a reminder, these shows are going up now over on FanDuel TV+, Plus, on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and your Roku devices. If you want to watch us alongside Up and Adams, The Solo Shot, all those other shows, uh, run it back as well, all in one place on FanDuel TV+. Plus. So download that app check us out there or check us out over on the FanDuel youtube page have you ever started a player in your fantasy lineup who scores three points while someone on your bench puts up 20 well with FanDuel's nfl best ball drafts you don't have to worry about that you're draft your team and each week the highest scoring lineup from your roster will be used as you battle for first place all season long leagues can be free to play or for money and range from three to twelve dollars or three to twelve players the nfl season will be here before you know it so head over to FanDuel today and get in on the action. Eligibility restrictions apply, honestly, as someone who despises waivers and season-long leagues. Best ball is great. So highly recommend checking that out over at FanDuel.com. Let's take a look now at tonight's MLB slate over at FanDuel Sports. We can break down where I'm seeing value beginning with the money lines. And the first one is one of these East Coast games. That is the Baltimore Orioles taking on Houston Astros. Right now, the Orioles' money line is plus 112. It was plus 116 last night, plus 114 earlier on. This is kind of FanDuel just moving towards the market, which got the Orioles around 110. I think at plus 112, that's still a good value and one I've been willing to take here in betting the Orioles to win this game. My model actually does make the Orioles the favorites here, so getting plus 112 even still pretty attractive. Grayson Rodriguez starting here for the Orioles. He hasn't had amazing results since he came back up, but his peripherals are much better than they were the first time around. He has a 4.04 skill interactive ERA across four starts back up in the majors and getting a lot of ground balls, 56% ground ball rate across those four starts. And obviously the issue with a four start sample is there's a lot of competition issues. He could have faced a lot of soft teams and stuff like that. But the teams that Rodriguez faced, and there were the Yankees who didn't have Aaron Judge, so that's not a great, that's a, an easy matchup there. Other ones, though, were the Dodgers, the Rays, and the Blue Jays, all very impressive teams, even against righties. The strikeouts for Rodriguez have crept up a bit in this span as well, which means that he's starting to flash the potential he had coming into this year. On the opposing side is Framber Valdez. He is an awesome pitcher. I hate betting against Framber Valdez because he is fantastic, but... The Orioles' active roster, pretty good against lefties. They have a 108 WRC plus there, whereas the Astros are actually at 102 against righties. So I, again, have the Orioles favored in this game. They're plus 112 on the money line right now. I think that is advantageous enough, and I agree with the model's assessment of this game. So the Orioles plus 112, the first money line bet for me for today. Second one is going to be in the Braves versus Pirates game. The Pirates are plus 138 to win this game. And if I want to bet the Pirates, that means I am betting on Mitch Keller facing the Braves offense. And with the way that Keller's recent stretch, recent two or three months have gone, that ain't great. But I do still think the Pirates are a bit undervalued in this matchup at plus 138. If we look at the 13 star sample on Keller, since he started to use more sliders, he has a 5.92 ERA, really, really rough and over a pretty large sample. But the peripherals, whether you look at FIP, XFIP, Skill Interactive ERA, whatever it may be, they all say his ERA should be at least a full run lower than where it currently is. The Braves, starting Yanni Chirinos here, he was let go by the Rays for a reason. Uh, you know, there was a reason he didn't have a spot in that rotation, even in the bullpen. Braves picked him up. Uh, his first two games with the Ray Braves haven't really changed my prior on Yanni Chirinos, Chirinos as of yet. 
Pirates offense, still a 102 WRC plus against righties on the current active roster. So they're not slouches by any means. So I would not be shocked if the Pirates pull off another stunner like they did last night where they pummeled Spencer Strider. I used Strider in DFS. That was not fun, but I think the Pirates could be interesting for today as well. This one has moved. It was plus 136, now plus 138. So check out where the market is when you pull up your app. Uh, see if the Pirates are still plus 138 at that point. You know, you know, if we're talking... 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock, and they're still plus 138. I would take it there because it implies the market is stagnated there, but I would at least check it out and see. Maybe you can get a better number later on, but even if it's just plus 138, I'm comfortable taking the Pirates where they're at right now. Final money line for today is also not a super fun one. Betting against the Astros, betting against the Braves and uh, and Framber Valdez, betting against all these, these people I like, and this time we're betting against the Dodgers with a team that has been brutal since the trade deadline in the Arizona Diamondbacks. But I think that, again, the market is a bit too low on this team right now, potentially an overreaction to how they played recently. Brandon Fott making the start here for the Diamondbacks. His first few starts back up from the minors have been good. The results have been good, but I would say they've been fluky. He's still letting up a lot of hard contact, but he's managed decent results. But hard contact also is not everything. So even though I would classify those starts as being fluky, and I don't think he can sustain that, I do think he looks better than what he did his first time and his second time up in the majors as well. He's starting to get some of the, the strikeouts that we thought he would get when he came up uh, the first time for the Diamondbacks. He had seven strikeouts last week against the Giants on the road. Now he goes home. It's obviously a tough matchup, but the Giants are pretty tough as well. And this one facing Julio Arias, uh, Ever since he came back off the IL, a six-star sample, his velocity has been down. And he is doing a great job of suppressing hard contact, which is something Arias has done for a very long time. That's kind of the one thing that's been in Arias' favor during this time. Everything else pretty average in this span. So I understand why the market is here. Uh, you know, I've, if you're watching over on uh, FanDuel's YouTube page or FanDuel TV Plus, you can see the Diamondbacks game log. They've lost, I think it's more than five straight. I think it's six or seven straight at this point. It's been a rough stretch for sure. But I don't think they're as bad as they played. So I think the market's a bit too aggressive in downplaying Arizona here, especially if we allow for some improvement in thought. I'm not projecting improvement, but it's a possibility for sure. So I think the Diamondbacks money line plus 134, a good way to go. So the three money lines I like for today, the Diamondbacks at plus 134, the Pirates at plus 138, and the Orioles at plus 112, all available over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's dig in now to some strikeout props for today. The first one is the Boston Red Sox taking on the Kansas City Royals. We could cut Crawford here facing off against Brady Singer. I actually think there is a bit of appeal in both strikeout overs for these two guys. Singer, you can get a three and a half at some books. Uh, four and a half at FanDuel plus 126 in the over. I would take the three and a half if available. Crawford over four and a half is minus 128 at FanDuel. You can get that even a bit softer in some other spots. So I think both these guys you shop around, Singer and Crawford, are attractive when it comes to strikeout uh, uh, overs for tonight. Crawford, I have him for a middling pitch count. Um, and even with that middling pitch count, this number just still seems too low. I have Crawford projected for 87 pitches for tonight. And despite that, I still think there is value in the over based on what my model is saying. Across the past six starts, Crawford has been throwing more cutters, and in that time, he has a 26.3% strikeout rate, and that's allowed him to hit the over on four and a half strikeouts and four out of six starts. That's even while making four of those six starts on the road, he's now at home taking on the Royals. The Royals' active roster, not as big of a strikeout target as they were before. They've cut down that a bit, but it's still not low. It's about average against righties right now. So... Even if the best number you can get on Crawford, over four and a half is minus 128 at FanDuel. I still think the over here is very, very viable. So I think I dig into Crawford, maybe Singer as well. Again, you can get three and a half, and that's always going to be a better, uh, more attractive number. He's been a lot better recently. So Singer and Crawford, two guys at target, but Crawford, the official recommendation here at minus 128 over four and a half FanDuel Sportsbook. As always, though, do shop around. Next up, as far as strikeout props go, let's talk about the White Sox and the Yankees. White Sox starting Tuki Toussaint. Toussaint is a tough guy to nail down because his pitch counts are kind of all over the map. He has made six starts this year, and he went 98 pitches last time out and 107 in another start. But he has had less or fewer than 90 pitches in his other four starts. So it's not a given that he goes super long in this game. I do have him projected with a pretty high pitch count. 
because he can do that, but it's not a given by any means. If we look at Toussaint as both a reliever and a starter, because he's had some pretty long relief outings, he has a 21.6% strikeout rate, which is a decent number. Probably not going to get you to five and a half strikeouts uh, super often, but like, you know, it's decent with the large pitch count. But it also comes with a 15.3% walk rate. And the issue with that is it drives those pitch counts in a hurry and can lead to unders even when a guy is getting a lot of whiffs. Saw that with Dylan Cease last night. He was getting a lot of whiffs, but he walked seven guys and it resulted in his strikeout prop going under seven and a half because he had just six strikeouts due to all the walks. And Toussaint has a pretty similar issue. If we look at seven outings for Toussaint with 80 plus pitches, whether as a reliever or a starter, Toussaint has hit over four and a half strikeouts just once. And he's gotten to five strikeouts uh, just one additional time. So he did also have five strikeouts um, on a lower pitch count in relief once as well. So he's gotten to one or a half strikeout below this number three total times. And he's gone above it just once in 10 total outings. Again, some of those in relief. But still, even as a starter, he has not been hitting over five and a half super often. I have Toussaint projected for 4.97 strikeouts, which is low enough for me to lay some juice on the under. Again, under five and a half strikeouts for Tucson is minus 146 at FanDuel. As always, shop around, find the best number you can get. But I do think that is a good number to take as of right now. Final strikeout prop I like for tonight is what he could potentially turn into a same game parlay over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And that is in the Brewers versus Rockies game. I actually do show value on the Brewers money line at minus 215 in one of my models. Other one, which is a bit less aggressive, does not show value there, but it is pretty close. The less aggressive model, let me see here. Less aggressive model has the Brewers win odds at 71%, whereas the other one's 73%, which is really, really, really high. Um, and I don't get there very often. I'm typically finding value in underdogs uh, with my numbers, but I do show value in the, the Brewers here at minus 215. You could potentially pair that with a third strikeout prop of the night, which is Kyle Freeland under four and a half at minus 132. If you make that a same game parlay over at FanDuel Sportsbook, it's plus 136. So you take the money line at minus 215 and turn it into plus 136. Obviously, if they win, it's not a guarantee this bet cashes. But I do think that because these two bets do mesh pretty well together, I think it makes a lot of sense to consider pairing them together the same game parlay, even though, as you know, that's not typically how I tend to play things. Let's talk here about the Freeland aspect of this as a standalone option under four and a half strikeouts. I think this number is so high because the Brewers have this reputation for being a massively high strikeout team against lefties, which they have been for the entirety of this year. So if you look at season long numbers, they definitely are. But they made a lot of moves at the All-Star break, and it's cut back on their strikeout rate against lefties in a pretty significant way. Their current active roster has just a uh, a. 22.3% strikeout rate against lefties this year. They added Carlos Santana, who is a guy who draws a lot of walks against lefties, does not strike out. He's not a big power guy against lefties. That's more so against righties, but he does draw a lot of walks, drives the pitch counts, and does not strike out. That's a big addition to this roster to cut back on their strikeout rate against lefties. Freeland has been off the IL for two starts now, and he had six strikeouts in one of those games, which is very impressive. But Typically, his strikeout rate dips big time on the road. And that game is at home. He's on the road here. And the home road splits have been true this year, albeit in a very small sample. So I wouldn't put a ton of stock into it, but it does matter at least to an extent. I think the strikeout prop should be three and a half, honestly. When you consider where the Brewers offense is currently at, when you consider where Freeland typically lives from a strikeout perspective, I think four and a half is really, really aggressive. So under four and a half minus 132, the way I'd want to go with Kyle Freeland. Again, if you want to take some action on the Brewers money line, I do think that minus 215 is solid there. And the same game parlay of that is going to be um, plus 136 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. I also do think that is at least in play for today. So the strikeout props for tonight, uh, Kyle Freeland under four and a half strikeouts, minus 132. Tukey Toussaint under five and a half strikeouts, minus 146. And Cutter Crawford over four and a half strikeouts, minus 128. As always, shop around on all those to make sure you are getting the best price. That is all that we have here for today here on Covering the Spread. We're going to get back uh, to some EPL later on this week. Austin Cass is going to swing by. We're going to talk about uh, match week number one. That's coming up on Thursday. We'll have Rob Freeman pitching ninja back on Friday. I'll talk some NASCAR coming up on Thursday with a big weekend there on Indy. So a lot of fun stuff coming up later on this week on Covering the Spread. Make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus as well. 
If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. 